the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. <laughs> The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi because they feel it's a friendly, good-natured show that offers you relaxation and enjoyment. And they'd like to mention the fact that their product, Wrigley's Spearmint Gum, offers you relaxation and enjoyment, too. It's pleasant to chew on a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint whether you're working, shopping, listening to your radio, or doing just about anything. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good. It's refreshing. And the good, easy chewing gives you comfort and satisfaction. Now, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum brings you Luigi as he writes another letter describing his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, I remember how we were talking in the other country? How I was going to come to America and make a million of dollars in five years? Mamma mia, I think it's going to be the other way around. I'm not going to make a five dollars in a million a year. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that that the mantic business is they got something in America that's called in the flesh? This means with the prices so high, dollars so low, you can't buy the things you don't need with the money you ain't to get. <laughs> But important thing, Mamma Mia, I'm still got my good health. And like Uncle Pietro is always a say, a good stomach is worth a million of dollars. <laughs> Mamma Mia, you should have seen Pasquale is a fat daughter Rosa. She's a walking around with the United States of Treasury. <laughs> <laughs> and the last few days, I'm, I'm got a lot of trouble with the Pasquale. Always he's a remind me, uh, he's a bring me to America just to marry Rosa. And always I'm reminding him how he's forgot to tell me this when he's brought to me from Italy. Wait, wait, mamma mia. Here comes Pasquale now, and, and I'm going to like that look on his face. Pasquale, my friend. Hello, Pasquale. Hello, hello. Hello. Uh, it's a nice weather, huh, Pasquale? Nice. Pepper says it might be rain, huh? My... I say the winter is going to be cold, you know? All right. Stop the weather report to give me the latest marriage report. <laughs> Please, no Rosa talking today, huh? Why not? The Rosas are ready, I'm ready, the preachers are ready, two witnesses are ready. The only one who's holding up with the works is you. Uh, but, Squally, I'm going to want to hold you up. As long as you've got all these people are working, you go ahead the wood after me. <laughs> oh, stop. I don't want no excuses. Look, Luigi, how can you like this bachelor life with all the crazy running around, the excitement and the noise? I promise you, once you marry Rosa... You're going to rest in peace. <laughs> that's, well, that's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> maybe, 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 Pasquale, if, if she wasn't so fat. Too fat, fat, fat. How can a man be so stupid? Luigi, I think you old enough with to know the truth about American girls. Huh? What's the truth? Everybody knows all American girls are fat. Yeah, but, but they don't look as fat, Pasquale. On the outside, they look as skinny, but underneath, they're all fat. <laughs> <laughs> they cheat. They, they press everything down with a corset and a gun. <laughs> but with my Rosa, everything you see, that's it. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe you're right, Pasquale. But it's still a marriage is impossible for me. I'm a got to no money, and even if I'm a had the money, the way Rosa eats uh, and eats... Wait, and wait, and wait. I'm going to make you a proposition. For every pound a Rosa gains after she marries you, I'm going to give you $20 a cash. $20 a pound, huh? That's more than England gives her for a pound. <laughs> <laughs> well... What do you say, my son? But, well, maybe I'm suffering now from inflation, but I'm not going to marry you, sir. Luigi, you shouldn't talk so fast. And I just made you a big proposition. And you know what they say in America? When opportunity knocks on your head, open up your ears. <laughs> but, well, I'm still got to say no. That's your final answer, eh? Yes, sir, Pascal. Final, last, absolute, the end answer, eh? Yes. Not even a teeny-weeny chance you might have changed your mind? Not the one at teeny. 
Luigi, is it going to go very bad for you, so you better act the fast. I'm counting up to the three. And if you don't say yes about a rosa, I'm kicking you out of this antique shop for good. No, 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 Pasquale. One. Pasquale, please. Two. Listen, I'm a... Three. Well, then I guess this is the end of for me, Pasquale, because... Well, I'm going to get out. Uh, four. <laughs> Pasquale, you said you were going to count to three. Uh, I'm a keeping this illegal, Luigi. In America, i got to count to ten before you out. <laughs> uh, five. Pasquale, you can account to a hundred. I'm still not going to change my mind. Oh, what a wise guy. Already you forgot about when you first come to America. Remember how excited he was when you first looked off the boat and you saw my Rosa waving an ice cream cone? Yeah, and the reason I was so excited was because I thought that she was the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> And I remember when you first stepped off the boat, how you bent down and touched the ground, and you said, Pasquale, I feel like Columbus. I'm a touch in America. Yes. Luigi, you think if I was abroad of Columbus to America that he would have said no to Rosa? Pasquale, if Columbus saw Rosa, he would have turned around and discovered South America. <laughs> All right, Mr. Big Mouth. I think the time is here when we can only talk a business. A hard business. How's the business? You owe me two months of rent and a twenty-six dollars of cash. Sixteen dollars. Sixteen dollars and ten percent interest to make the twenty-six. <laughs> <laughs> well, my palm is awaiting, Mister Big Shot. That's the matter. You get a little pale around the ears, Mister Pumpkinhead. Well, uh, uh, Pasquale, you gotta have the money now. Yes, and now, N O U, now. <laughs> Pay me my money or get out. Out, the Pasquale. Pasquale, you really mean it? Out is only the beginning. You better move out of the state because I'm gonna get a judgment and hound you till you pay, get married, or go to jail, Mister Bosco. Mr. Pasquale. That's all right. To get out of town by tomorrow morning or the sheriff will be here with his pussy and throw you out. Come on. <laughs> Mamma mia, is, is it not the first time he's thrown me out, but but looks like it's going to be the last. Well, at this time, I'm gone. Maybe, maybe out the West and make my fortune. I better go to my night school and say goodbye to my friends for the last of time. Quiet, lad. Quiet, please. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Here. Mr. Horowitz? Yeah. Mr. Olson? Hey, yeah. Mr. Schultz? Last stop, everybody off. <laughs> Just smile, everybody. Be happy. <laughs> all right, Mr. Schultz. We're all smiling. Now, you may answer the first question. Mr. Spalding, keep me smiling. Call on Olsen first. <laughs> oh, never mind. We're studying verbs today. Mr. Schultz will give you an easy one. Give us a sentence with a verb. All right. Uh... I had lumbago when I came to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schultz, that word is pronounced lumbago. Oh, they changed it recently? <laughs> they never changed it. It's always been pronounced lumbago, according to Webster. All right, but I think Webster's making it a big mistake. <laughs> now, let's hear your sentence again, Mr. Schultz. Only pronounce the words correctly. All right. I had lumbago when I came to Chicago. <laughs> you know very well that the A in Chicago has a soft sound. Not near the elevated where I live. Stop of a lullabalouza. Don't you think we have had enough tomfoolery? May I give the correct answer so that we may proceed? Oh, why can't you be like us? Stupid and lovable. <laughs> Miss Spaulding, I would like to try with an answer. Well, let's try, Mr. Basco. He looks so quiet today. Huh? You, you talk to me, Miss Spaulding? Yes. You may give us a sentence with a verb. All right. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to live in a city. Very good. Why, you, you happy to see me going away, Miss Spaulding? <laughs> Oh, don't be silly. Now, tell us the verb in your sentence, Mr. Basco. Which word shows the action? Pasquale. 
<laughs> Pasquale? Tobacco, what has that word got to do with your sentence? Because if he's not chess me out, then I'm going to have to live in the city. Luigi, you, you must be joking. He don't look like it, Olsen. Why is Pasquale chasing you out this time, Luigi? No, why, he asked. It's on account of Luigi that Rosa is still a bachelor. Hush, <laughs> my Luigi. This ain't the first time Pasquale has chased you out. He really don't mean it. Now, sure, so he's a minute this time and, and for good. He's getting a judgment against me, and I'm, I'm, i got to get out of the state. Luigi, you can't. We won't let you. No, 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 please, friends. Don't try to stop me. I'm never going to give a Pasquale the chance to hurt me no more. So tomorrow, I'm, I'm going away. Far away. You have any money, Luigi? I'm going to get some. Luigi, I, I have some money Olga doesn't know about. And I got a few dollars put away from my Esther. Yeah, and me too. I'll bet with the money we hide from our wives and the money they hide from us, we could wipe out the national debt. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, look, about the money, you shouldn't worry. No, sure, sir. Friends, I'm, I'm, I'm done in the money. I'm, but thanks all the same. And I, I'm going to write to your letters. Where will you go, Luigi? I'm not sure yet. Maybe to California. You can't just walk around the streets. Look, we got a room in my house. I'll put up a cot bed. No, no, Olga and I live alone. We have oodles of rooms. Yeah, but you got my house, Luigi. But between the three of us, we got enough bedrooms to put the YMCA out of business. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, little Wiener Schnitzel? Uh, Frenzy, you, you, you all, you all so nice. <laughs> Kind of go by, go by, Miss Spalding and the friends. I, I'm going to write to you. He's gone. Yes, I believe he means it. Uh, Ying and Ivy, they're going to miss him. But quick, Miss Spalding, call on me. I want to commit educational suicide. <laughs> Before we return to life with Luigi, we'd like to mention that Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is really a two-way treat. It's a taste treat with lots of refreshing, delicious, real spearmint flavor. And it's a chewing treat that gives you lots of good, smooth, pleasant chewing satisfaction. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is an economical treat, too. A single, inexpensive package gives you hours of chewing enjoyment. So next time you go shopping, be sure to get a few packages of refreshing, delicious... Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. It costs so little and tastes so good that you'll want to enjoy it often every day. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, I'm decided to live in Chicago and all of my friends. It's a bigger heartache to live with such a good friend. Because I'm, I'm never forget the last winter when I was sick, how Schultz is stood up with me all night to the aspirin and the hot tea and a cup of syrup. And then when I woke up in the morning, there was no Schultz. Only a note that said, I hope my wife believes I stayed up all night with a sick friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mamma Mia, is, is, is it time enough for me to go? But... First, I'm going to go to the bus station and see how far I'm going to go with my little money. Please, Mr. Ed, this is the Continental Trailways Bus Lines? Yes, sir. How far are you going, mister? How far do you want to take me? Well, we warn you. That's, a, that's where I want to go. How much does it cost? Well, figure it roughly about three cents a mile. Mamma mia, every mile I'm going to get off and I pay the driver three cents. <laughs> Excuse me, please. You, you got a trainer here that's uh, got to California? Sure. Upper or lower berth? I'm going to want to go to California and not to have a baby. <laughs> Are you here, Luigi? By jingin' it, the store is empty. Seven o'clock in the morning, and we're too late. Look, he's left. Yeah, and we never thought he would. I feel like 
I feel like I lost a brother. Sure, he, he was a good man. Real fine and a, a true gentleman to boot. He was a friend. Now, oh, stop saying he was. He was. He ain't lost till he had been there. He's not going, which we ain't sure of. But... Oh, him and I for shimmers. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he's gone. No, well, well, maybe not. Uh, let's look in the closet for a suitcase. A good idea. No, but suitcase. This Luigi never owned a suitcase. The only thing he ever had was that canvas bag with the one handle torn and hanging down like a bad ear on a cooker spaniel. <laughs> Look at the way he cleaned up the shop before he left. Everything in place, not one speck of dust. Sure, that Pasquale is a big, unmitigated 14 carat yerk. <laughs> That's right. That's his fault. Why, if that big blubber belly ever talks to me again, I'll, I'll tear him like a herring. Go ahead, Mr. Delicatessen, a man. The herring is awake. Uh, <laughs> Molly, where did you come from? I'm what? awake, the Schultz. Uh, my, my, my humblest apologies, Pasquale. It was a mistake to call you a herring. That's bad. Yeah, a herring does the things it does because it's pickled. But what's your excuse? <laughs> You better watch what you say. You liable to wind up in a catastrophe. <laughs> First of all, we ain't got time to argue with you. We want to know, where's Luigi? Yo, did, did he leave some end? Eh? Anything. Look, I don't know where that pup's quicker went. But as far as I'm concerned, he can leave the country and live in a New Mexico. Pasquale, how, how could you chase him out like that? After all, you, you brought him to America. You were like a father to him. Even more than a father, a mother. Even more than a mother, a monster. <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, there, there's no use fighting. We, we, we came here to find out where Luigi moved, too. I wonder where he is now. What he's doing. Maybe we should look for him. Luigi. <laughs> Mister, are you the Bob Lipton who's a put advertisement in the paper? But you wanted somebody should share automobile ride with you to California? Yep, that's me. I leave at three this afternoon. That okay with you? Yes, yeah, okay, Mister Lipton. Uh, you got a good car? A fine car. It's a Willys. It's a Willys? Sure. If it's a Willys, how come you got it? <laughs> hey, you got a sense of humor, friend. Boy, the miles just fly by when you got nice, friendly company. Now, about the road expenses. We go halfies on the gas and oil, okay? Oh, sure, sure. I'm always the one to pay my half. You pay for the gas, I'm a pet for the oil. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you pay for the gas and I'll pay for the oil. All right. Uh, if you want to spend more money, that's making me happy. I I'm not going to afford the train or the bus, so, so I'm glad to meet you. Well, that's good. Uh, uh, what's your name? Hello, Luigi Basca. I, I know you call me Luigi. Okay, friend, my name is Bob Lipton. You can call me Bob. Thank you, Mr. Lipton. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is this a car you got that is not the too old, huh? Well, I'll be frank, friend. It's a 34. 34, huh? Hey, it must be a good car. Was a wonderful year for the wines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Let's have a look at this road map right here now. Here, friend, now we got a choice of two routes. You see, the, the northern and the southern. Uh -huh. Which do you like best? Oh, please, you take a first to pick. All right, well, this northern route here is very nice. You take this Highway 30 here through Cedar Rapids, Iowa. We go through Omaha, cut into Cheyenne, up through the Rocky Mountains, turn here into Salt Lake City, then south to 6, through Nevada, Death Valley, on to 58, cut in on Barstow on 66, then San Bernardino, Pasadena, and L.A. Mamma mia, you never stopped the once for lunch. <laughs> Don't worry, now, there'll be plenty of stuff. Well, look, now, I'm agreeable. If you don't like the northern route, we can take the southern. Yeah. Well, friend, what do you say? What the... Huh? Hey, you look like you're dreaming or something. Uh, what's the matter, kid? You're running away to forget some babe, huh? Oh, no, I'm not after the baby. No. <laughs> I mean a doll, a dame, a skirt. A doll, a dame, a skirt? Yeah. 
Mamma mia, I stopped school only yesterday and already I don't understand the English language. Please, please, you, you show me this, uh, this is Southern Route, huh? Southern Route? Yeah, sure thing. Now, here's Southern Route right here. We leave Chicago here on 66, yeah. go through Springfield down to St. Louis, then to the Ozark Mountains. Oh, Jacques, mm -hmm. Is it these are high mountains? And how oh, they're high. I got a friend almost got killed there once. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't you worry, friend. These brakes of mine were realigned only 12 years ago. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Well, yeah, let's see here. Next, we hit Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm going to eat a big winter storm that was a head there once. Oklahoma? Sure, that's real tornado country. Uh -huh. Those things knock down trees, carry off rooftops, and pick a car right off the ground like it was a matchbox. Maybe you know some other way to California? <laughs> <laughs> You're joking. <laughs> I'm not the... And now, look, you worry too much. Now, let's see here. We hit Amarillo, Texas here. That's nice, wide-open prairie country. We can do 80 miles an hour on those roads. Uh, 80 miles an hour? Why, sure. My old buggy can do 90. Yeah, but, 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 but supposing the tires suddenly break up, but then what? Then we turn over, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> look, friends, you only live once. Not for the car is a turn off. <laughs> please, please, Bob, don't drive it so fast because I'm... Okay, I'm okay, to... just leave the drive to old Bob. Now, let's see. Out of Amarillo, we go down route on 60 here, hit through New Mexico. Then we're up into the mountains again. We go up about 5,000 feet. Please, come down, Bob. I'm getting a dizzy. Now, relax. <laughs> relax, friend. Those narrow mountain roads are a cinch. Why, I can make a turn at 50 miles an hour on one wheel with my eyes closed. And when you open them up, I'm not going to be there. <laughs> now, don't you let it worry, your friend. I never yet got a ticket in my life. Oh, that's a good How long have you been driving? Three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Mamma mia. When are, when, when are we going... If we ever get down across the mountains, where do we go? Well, we're going to go right down here to Arizona. It's a nice road in Arizona, huh? Oh, they're okay, till we hit the Apache Mountains. Maybe I'm going to better take a boat. Yeah. Hey, Bob, but these, these, these Apache Mountains, they're not so high like the Rockies, huh? A tricky, friend, just tricky. tricky yeah. We just got to watch out for the fallen rocks. <laughs> and since it's only a two-lane road, we drive over near the edge of the cliff all the way. Yeah, but... Uh, but, but, but here, here you keep your eyes open, huh? Are you kidding? <laughs> if I let go of that wheel for one second, we're both up the creek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but, but now we're in California, huh? Oh, no, no, not yet, friend. Just keep your shirt off. I'm too frightened to take it off. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, friend. You're a great kidder. And now where was I? Up at the creek. <laughs> Oh, here we are, here. We get off the Apache Trail, hit into Phoenix, Arizona. That's nice, wide-open desert country. Hundreds of miles of fast driving over the sea. Yeah, but is it safe, huh? Oh, sure. We take along plenty of water just in case the car overheats and we get stuck. Oh, sure. Sure. Now, don't tell me you're afraid of those desert sandstorms or those coyotes or rattlesnakes. But that's the sir. Hey, Bobby, you mean they got a lot of specs in this desert? Now, will you stop worrying? Whenever I go through the desert, I take along plenty of anti-snake serum for snake bites. Yeah, but supposing the snake don't want to take it as a serum before he's a bite to you. Will <laughs> <laughs> you stop worrying? Now, look, we go on from this point. We can see... Look, you three, I don't have to stand here and take no more insults. Sing Pasquale, where would Luigi go, please? I don't care. Did he have any money at all? That's none of my business, and I'll stop a bothering me. You get me all the flabbergasted. <laughs> Charles, do you think Luigi would do something foolish? Your Luigi is very impetuous. Uh, perhaps we should call the city hospital? Pasquale, you better pray. If anything bad happens to Luigi, we'll take you to court and see that you get the electric chair for 20 years. <laughs> no, show, show, calm down. Calm down, we shouldn't think the voice. Yeah, but how can I help worrying? This big ham heart here has got a heart of stone. Nothing bothers him. All right, so I got a heart of stone, so I don't care for that ungrateful little boo. But like I said before, it's my business. Hey, Mr. I... Pasquale, uh -huh. get a lead on that Basco. Shh, shh, they're not here. Well, I don't get it. You hire us to get information on Basco right away, and I don't want it. Look, Mike, come out of my stall. No, wait a minute. 
Did Pasquale hire you to find Luigi? For 75 bucks a day, he hired himself a private eye, but I don't know what for. No, come on, I, I, I don't You want... don't want we should know, huh? So you don't care for Luigi. Huh, Pasquale? Oh, get out of all of you. Yeah, we miss your stupid Pasquale. I'm a walking around, hating of myself, a wishing I was a dead. And at a Schultz, he says I got a heart of stone, a hammerhock. <laughs> I'm sorry, <I'm> Pasquale. <laughs> Five dollars a day. Thank you, 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 you could buy a bloodhound for that. Can I talk now, Mr. Pasquale? Yeah, yeah, well, 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 well. Uh, wait a minute. I don't quite know yet, but the trail's getting warm. I traced his movements to his tailor. He paid off a buck he owed on a cleaning job. Then he went to the barber and took a close haircut. Luigi with a close haircut? Oh, Schultz, he's a giant in the Marines. <laughs> yeah, let me finish, will you? Then he said goodbye to a Mr. Ostro, a Mrs. Pellegrino, Tony the newsboy. And then, then, uh, then what? Well, the newsboy said he took the sea car going north at about 5.18 p.m. That got us to the bus stop. He took the bus. No, no, we traced him to the railroad station. How do you like that pop squeak? I'm spending the $75 a day, and he's a traveler in the first class. <laughs> no, no, he didn't take the train. Oh. Uh, from there on, we lost him. Well, look, Mr. Detective, please, don't stop looking. I, I, and every penny I got it in my pocket to Pasquale, $75, huh? Yeah, 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 that's... Uh... Make seventy six dollars, yeah. But, but, but go out now and find him. Huh? That's all right. We're staying around here. Ain't going to help us. <laughs> Hello, friend. <laughs> Louis. Hi, boy, Luigi. How are you? Oh, friends, it's, it's good to see you all again. And a Pasquale, a Pasquale, you you crying? Luigi, next to time you let me run you away from home, I'm never going to talk to you again. <laughs> Luigi, Luigi, where did you go? Who, who brought you home? What happened, Luigi? Pasquale, you know how you always tell me I should stay in my own little backyard? Yes, a little cabbage puss. <laughs> yes, I'm found out the medics got a mountain of cyclones and deserts and rattlesnakes. I'm never going to more to Western than a Western Avenue. Good for oh, oh, hey, oh, 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 Welcome home, my son. Hello, Papa. <laughs> Well, Mamma Mia, I'm back at home in my little antique shop. And I'm learning the new respect for the big part of America that I'm never saw yet, the West. Maybe someday I'm going to take vacation in California. And I'm not going to go by car. No, sir, I'm taking no chances. If it's a nicer day, I'm going to walk. You're loving the San Luis Vasco immigrant. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they want to remind you that on the job or off the job, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. It's refreshing to sink your teeth into a piece of Wrigley's Spearmint because the lively spearmint flavor cools your mouth and freshens your taste. Then, too, the chewing itself gives you satisfaction and a refreshing little lift. So do as millions do. On the job and off the job... Enjoy chewing Wrigley Spearmint Gum often every day. When you go to the store, remember to get a few packages of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. This is a Cy Howard production directed by Mac Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Mary Schiff as Miss Spaulding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, Ken Peters as Olsen and Sidney Miller as Bob Lipton. This is the CBS Radio Network.